And if you are in that situation where all hope is gone, thank God you can still reach out and get a hold of him and he will turn the situation around and make a way where there is no way. Welcome to Power Connection. Boy, is it going to be a power connection today. I'm Donna Schaumbach. Welcome to all our new viewers, our regular viewers, those listening by podcast. Let me just say up front, you got to check out Schaumbach.org. Make sure you avail yourself of all of our materials, our school of ministry, and be sure to sow into this ministry that's been going on for 76 years years. Hallelujah. That'd be a good number to sow, 76, uh, for the number of years that the Shambach Ministries has sown the gospel seed into the world. Now get ready. One of my favorite messages preached preach by none other than my dad, R.W. Shambach, Jesus in the midst. I'm going to use as a text verse number 19 of this 20th chapter, just a portion of it. I'm going to take just a little phrase out of the middle of it. Let me read the entire verse. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. If I put a title on this message, I believe I'd title it Jesus in the Midst. He's here right now. Somebody said, I can't see him. How do you know he's here? I brought him with me. Did you bring him with you tonight? He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Jesus is here, and he's here to do what he's done for the past 2,000 years. A scripture in Hebrews that I like, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, how do you know what he did yesterday? I have a record right here in the book of what he did. And when I read what he did back in those days, I have the confidence and the assurance that he will do it today because he never changes. We're living in a changing world Everything changes except Jesus. You can depend on him. You can count on him. And here in this 20th chapter, I get so much out of this, I won't have time to finish it all. But I want you to know that God has a special miracle for you. This has to deal with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the verse number nine, I never read this, for as yet, Talking about his disciples, they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. As long as they have been with him, they did not know the scripture that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. And here he is now. They crucified him. He took my place on that cross. I was the one that should have died, but he took my place. And he did it voluntarily. He came from heaven. The song that, that, that we sing here it just blesses me. He came from heaven to earth, from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, and from the grave right back to God the Father. Jesus paid the price in order that you and I will be liberated from the power of sin in our life. Do you remember the day when you first got saved? I remember the day I got saved. It was on a street corner. And I thank God for street preachers. But I heard the gospel preached. And I responded to it on a street corner. I knew no theological terms. But when I got up on my feet, I knew that a change had taken place. It felt like I took a shower on the inside. Didn't know what happened, but I knew I was changed. Changed by the power of God. Jesus Christ is not dead, but he is alive. If we can get Jesus to come into the midst. Now, while he was hanging on that cross, 
He was in the midst of two thieves. He was on the middle cross. You always find him in the midst of some things, of trouble. Here he is on a cross, and there's two thieves, one on either side of him. And he is the man in the middle. Aren't you glad you got a middle man? Somebody that you can come to. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus is in the midst of your problems. When all hope is gone, you are on solid ground where God is ready to perform a miracle in your life. Do you have your back against the wall? Have you got a bad report from the medical profession? Did you get a divorce notice in the, in the mail? Do you have a problem financially? All hope is gone. Then I've come to tell you that if you can get Jesus to come in the middle of that situation where all hope is gone, he will turn that thing around and he will perform a miracle in your life. Can you shout hallelujah with me, somebody? All hope is gone. Your back may be against the wall, but I want you to know, don't give up. Hang in there. Hold on because you have a miracle that's on the way. The answer's already been answered. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. He said, everyone that asketh, not five out of eight or six out of ten, but everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened unto him. And if you are in that situation where all hope is gone, thank God you can still reach out and get a hold of him and he will turn the situation around and make a way where there is no way. All hope is gone. Jesus was in the midst. The same day and evening, being the first day of the week when the doors were shut, where the disciples assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Their dreams just went up in smoke. The one they'd been following for three years, They thought he was going to set up a kingdom on earth. They misunderstood what he was preaching. They didn't know. Peter thought he was going to be the chief of police. (laughs) And they thought he was going to set up a kingdom. Each one of them had their little job already picked out. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ was letting them know something that they didn't know anything about it. They were unbelievers. Do you know you can be in the church and be an unbeliever? Don't turn that television set off. I'm talking to you. I know you go to church. Unbelief is another sign that your faith is weak. But faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And I believe every time you hear the word of God preached, faith comes alive. Faith without works is what? That means if you don't work your faith, your faith will die on you. What do you do with something dead? No, you don't bury it. You resurrect it. I'm talking about resurrection power here. I'm talking about Jesus that died and was buried, but the grave couldn't hold him. He came out of that grave. He is alive. He was resurrected. And our faith is resurrected where we can believe God for a miracle in our life. And he will come right into the midst of that situation that you're involved in. And he'll come right in the middle of it. And he'll make a way where there is no way. In your business, in your home, in your family relationship, I don't care what it is, what the problem is. You may have received a bad report from the medical profession, but I want you to know he'll make a way where there is no way. 
You got a miracle with your name on it. The first day you cried out to God, he already sent the answer, but the devil is trying to hold it up. But hang in there. All hope is not gone against hope. I believe in hope, and the miracle is mine, and I'm going to shout the victory until it comes to where I am. Raise your hands and shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Oh, I get beside myself every time I read this book. The same day I'm reading from John's gospel, chapter 20, verse 19. And I'll just reach in there and take that right out of the last portion. He stood in the midst. This is when Jesus comes, when you're going through problems. You know, when Jesus died, there's a scripture that I got a hold of here. I never saw this before. And you know, when you, uh, when you talk about his resurrection, sometimes there's some beautiful things that, that are hidden in a verse that you just run over. And back in that sixth verse, well, now let me read from the first verse. First day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark under the sepulcher. And she sees the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they've taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and they came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter. And they, he came first, that's John, came first to the sepulcher and he's stooping down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then comes Peter. Peter's like me. He just come running in there and stumbled over everything and ran right into the sepulcher. And he went into the sepulcher, and he seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw, and he believed. That napkin that was folded, and I was reading some of this in a commentator, from a commentator, that that napkin that was folded is a sign that Jesus gave to his disciples when a person sits down at the table and eats a meal, when he folds that napkin, you're letting the host know you enjoyed everything and you're coming back. And Jesus is letting his disciples know that it's not over, but he is coming back again. Even though he is resurrected from the dead and he's going to be ascended into heaven, I've come to ring it out to every one of you that are listening by means of radio and television that Jesus is coming. You can't preach the resurrection unless you preach the coming of Christ. Jesus is coming. I had a friend in Holland who's a Dutchman, of course, and his ministry was he had a, he's a pilot and he had a plane and he had little little tracks, just small enough with a little f f expression on it. Uh, Jesus is coming. That's Dutch for Jesus is coming. And he would fly over different countries and he would take literally millions of these bits of paper and fly over cities and drop them down in their own language. Can you imagine people walking on the streets and all of a sudden, they feel this coming on their head, and they read, Jesus is coming. Ah! <laughs> what a ministry. He did this in England, in English, and this man had this ministry of just telling everywhere he went that Jesus is coming. Are you ready to meet him? 
I'm talking to you, every one of you that are watching this on television. If Jesus were to come before this telecast is over, would you make heaven your home? Somebody said, well, Brother Shambach, and I get mail. People say, nobody knows you're saved. Oh, yes, you do. His spirit will bear witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. I had a young man come to me in Seattle, Washington. He said, preacher, am I saved? I said, no, sir. He said, you don't know me? I said, don't have to know you. If you have to go around asking somebody, am I saved? That's an evident sign you don't have it. I'm talking about a salvation that you know, that you know, that you know that you have passed from death unto life and you are a child of God. And when Jesus comes, you're going to give this old world a permanent wave and we're getting out of here and we're going to meet Jesus. He's coming back again. Thank God we can be ready to meet him. I'm talking about this resurrection. All hope is gone. Jesus came in the midst of the people. Listen, when the doors were shut, the disciples were hiding from the Jews. The doors were shut. They were locked in. Do you ever feel like you're locked in? Closed in? No way out? But here comes Jesus. They couldn't even believe that he was alive. Who's going to believe women preachers anyway? Mary Magdalene, I mean, she had seven devils in her. And Jesus cast them out of her. Now, the men weren't there. The women were there because they believed what he said. Women are believers. Women have faith. Men are skeptical. Come on, ladies, holler hallelujah. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it unless I can put the finger in the nail prints. I saw him on that cross. I'm not going to believe it unless I can thrust my hand into his side. Don't that sound like a Pentecostal believer? Doesn't that sound like a charismatic believer? We want to see something before we believe it. You heard the young man testify tonight. He wanted to feel something. and He didn't get it at first. But thank God, don't take all my feeling from me. He got it. And he got a good dose of it the way he was testifying tonight. But here, Jesus walked right through the wall when the doors are shut. And I want you to know when they saw him, then they believed. And Jesus made an appearance to them behind closed doors. Do you have an unsaved loved one that you can't get out to church? We can believe God for that unsaved loved one. If two of us here on earth agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. Jesus sent his word and he healed them. And I want you to know he'll go behind closed doors. He'll go into a country where you can't get in. Cuba won't allow American, American preachers to go in, but we can send the word of God to Cuba. And we can see God performing miracles. I've seen it in the Czech Republic and I've seen it in Russia. Before those walls came down, I've seen it in East Berlin. There was, uh, the gospel was shut out. But thank God, Jesus penetrated it with the anointing of God when two people joined together and believed him for a miracle. And I want you to know that we can send the word of God and bring deliverance to people behind closed doors in a hospital room. I don't care what the need is, Jesus is still resurrection power. And he can do today what he did yesterday if he can just find somebody that will believe it. Can you shout amen? amen. Resurrection power. You have it in you. You have it in you. 
He abides in you. He lives in you. Jesus comes right into the midst of every one of us. Every one of us. In just a little while, I'm going to be passing out bottles of oil. And this oil has already been prayed over. And we're going to see miracles wrought. I have testimonies that are stacked high of people that have been saved and healed and delivered as a result of it. Prayer cloths that have gone out anointed. Some women put it in their husband's shoe. He don't look in his shoe, he just puts that foot in there. He doesn't know he's sliding it into a, a miracle. And because of our faith together, we're going to see miracles take place. Can you shout amen? amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Now let me read just one more. Will you please? I'm reading from the 20th chapter of John's gospel. Verse number 19. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they were fearful of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were behind locked doors. Do you know that Jesus will come and stand in the midst of even an unbeliever? You say, but my husband don't believe anything. You used to be there. Every one of us had an apple out of that sack. But somebody put their faith to work for you. Thomas, he said, I'm not going to believe it. Jesus will come into the midst of every one of you that are lacking in faith. Now, faith teachers won't teach you this, but I'm going to teach it to you. Even if you don't have a lick of faith, but you do have it. But you may feel you don't have any faith. But I want you to know Jesus will come right into the midst. He broke something loose and came into the room where Thomas was and said, he didn't even rebuke him. He said, Thomas, come here, boy. Put your finger in them nail prints. You can't think of anything without him knowing what you were thinking. Take your hand and thrust it into my side. Doesn't say Thomas did it, but he fell down at his feet and said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, More blessed are they who believe and see not. He said, Thomas, now you believe because you see. And thank God we do see things. But it's a greater element of faith when you don't see it, when you don't feel it. We don't go by feelings. But we go by the word of God, just like Dodie testified of how God healed her. She wrapped herself in that word and confessed it constantly. How many years ago? 20. And it's still working. We need to change our confession. Can you shout amen? amen. I am healed by his stripes. You may not feel it. Ah, I'm healed by his, uh, his stripes. <laughs> but you, you can make a positive confession. Jesus will come right into the midst of where you are, even when you're lacking faith, and he will turn the situation around, and you will be the recipient of the greatest miracle in your life. Amen. You can leave here tonight a different person. You may not be a Christian. You may never receive Christ as your Savior. But it's going to change tonight. This is going to be your first day of eternity. And all he's doing is waiting for you to do something. Some of you watching this now and say, Brother Shemek, oh, I wish I was there so, so I could run to that altar. When you hear the word of God preach, he wants a response out of you immediately. And the miracle is yours. Can you shout amen? Yeah.
When you're lacking faith, when you're locked in prison, I don't care where you are, when Peter was locked in prison, Jesus came right into the midst and loosed the bonds that he had. In a prison house, I don't care where they are, where your loved ones are, Jesus will make an appearance to where they are and stand in the midst and deliver them and set them free. Do you believe that? I believe it also. The doors were shut and Jesus can walk right through the door. He'll come into your automobile. You can have locked doors on your car and Jesus can be sitting right alongside of you. He will make a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in, in an accident almost? An accident on its way to happen and all you did was holler, Jesus! And whoosh, something happened. Didn't have time to say, Heavenly Father, we come to you reverently tonight. All you had time to say was, Jesus! Did you ever holler his name out? You're not ashamed when you're going through problems. When you get a pain, Jesus, Jesus, he'll make an appearance right where you are and he will turn the situation around and you will be the recipient of a miracle. It belongs to you because you're a child of God. Are you shouting, Jesus, do you need a miracle? It belongs to you. You heard him say it. Just lift your hands right where you are. Child of God, stretch out your faith and receive your miracle. If you don't know Jesus, you need to receive the greatest miracle, and that is a heart changed by receiving Christ into your life. All you have to do is say, Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner, Forgive me of my sins. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. I am willing to turn my back on the world and become a disciple of you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you are the miracle-working God. Lord, to those of us who know you, you promised you'd never leave us nor forsake us. You are always in the midst of every situation we walk through. But Father, for some, it looks dark. They've received a bad report. Their finances are struggling. The family is a mess. It's brought discouragement. But in the name of Jesus, I speak peace to the storm that has come up against your loved ones. Lord, I thank you that we have hope in you. And right now, you're turning the thing around. You speak Speak a word into our situation, and we speak it out, Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are Jehovah Sidkenu, our righteousness. You are Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. We thank you, God, today we have a shalomed mind. We rest in your peace because the miracle is ours. We claim it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, please go to shambach.org. Let us know you did that. We want to be praying for you. And we have something that we can send you. Just let us know that today is the day you received the Lord Jesus Christ. Until next time, this is Donna Shambach reminding you, Jesus has a miracle with your name on it. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. For more information about upcoming events, Shambach School of Ministry, and how you can be a part of our worldwide outreach, visit us online at shambach.org or donnaglobal.com. See you next time on Power Connection.